Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is NXT TakeOver Chicago. We are in, of course, Chicago, Illinois for this hefty weekend that we've got in front of us. It's TakeOver tonight. It's Money in the Bank tomorrow. It is an incredible weekend of action. And what a weekend we are going to be having in this arena. And what better way to kick it all off than with NXT TakeOver. It's going to be a huge night of action, one that I certainly cannot wait for. Five matches and... Boy, oh boy, are they going to be incredible, to say the least. We see here, to kick things off here tonight, we have got one hell of a contest. The Fatal 4-Way, four four, uh, uh, Fatal 4-Way Women's Matchup for the NXT Women's Championship. Tessa Blanchard, Jazzy Gabbard, Charlotte, and the champion, Kyrie Sane. It could certainly be one very, very interesting evening for these, uh, for these four women. They all, of course, want to be that champion, but it seems as if there's a divide in the mix. The trifecta of Tessa Blanchard and Jazzy Gab, but it almost feels like it doesn't matter to them who wins the title. Charlotte and Sane, of course, they wanted to urgently be them, and they will do anything in order to make sure it is them. That could be one hell that is gonna be one hell of a way to kick things off here tonight. But of course, it is not the only matchup we have here tonight. As a matter of fact, we've got we've got a match that doesn't even regard a title. It is just perhaps the most personal matchup we have seen on the card. It is Leo Rush and Edge, one-on-one -on -one here. Leo Rush was, uh, you know, making waves in NXT many months ago before he was taken out by a master assailant. A master assailant who didn't find out for months, months on end, until it was revealed to be Edge. Until Edge was the man behind it all. Edge was the one who tried to end Leo Rush's career and said that he did it because he hates what Leo Rush has done to wrestling. Rush saying there is a difference between doing that and trying to end his career. Tonight is Rush's time for revenge. Edge is going to be feeling the uh, receipt of it. Full force here tonight. It is no holds barred between the two at TakeOver Chicago. That is going to be something pretty damn special. As is our main event of the evening. What a main event we are in for in that regard. The NXT Championship is on the line. Cesaro versus Corin, one on one for that title. Cesaro, the only one who wanted to step up to Corin, the only one who wanted to face him at TakeOver. And if you think the NXT Champion really cares that greatly, well, no, I mean, it'd be safe to say that as time has gone on, he most certainly has. Cesaro has played Corin's games against him and may well have put Corin on the back foot heading into tonight. That will be needed to be seen, but these two men, these two fine athletes in their own right, meet one-on-one -on -one in that ring to be NXT champion. One looking to become the face of NXT and be the champion and be the rightful heir to the throne that everyone deserves. The other one looking to keep on as, it, as business has been. That, of course, is Corin. Will he lose the title here tonight? Will Cesaro take the title home? Will we see any titles change hands here tonight on this electric night of takeover? We'll find out. Let's kick things off with the NXT Women's Championship matchup. And here we go. Takeover Chicago is all ready to go. And coming out first in this one is going to be <coughs> the leader of Trifecta herself. Tessa Blanchard heads towards the ring <coughs> as she looks to become the NXT Women's Champion. She has been the one to kind of instigate everything in regards to what goes on with Trifecta and that NXT Women's Championship. She's kind of been the one to push the buttons and send people somewhere in regards to how she wants to get that title. Blanchard almost captured the title back at Orlando the night before WrestleMania, but was unsuccessful there. Now though, in a fatal four-way environment where anything really can happen, where anyone can be champion, Blanchard may well find her ticket in order to be the champion. We'll see if that'll be the case or not. We'll see if that is going to happen in this one or not. But either way, Tessa Blanchard heads into this one feeling of the utmost confidence in herself and Trifecta as well. Blanchard in her same regard has got a bit of a, a, a rest advantage over the others as well. She did not, she was not in action this past NXT. Whereas uh, the other three women in this matchup were. So that is more, more reason, I guess, for why... She could walk out as the champion at the end of this one. But so too could her other member of Trifecta. We have to see them coming out to this to, to hear them coming out to the same entrance theme, but of course, they are on opposite sides in their own ways. Making her way out will be the alpha female Jazzy Gabbard, the brute, not only of this matchup, but of the NXT women's division as a whole. She heads towards the ring. Ready to lead on. 
for herself. As I said, heading towards, the, as I said at the start, when this, uh, and I've been saying heading into TakeOver as well, it hasn't really mattered for Trifecta, it feels, who wins. If Gabbert or Blanchard wins to you tonight, it doesn't really matter who wins, just so long as one of them does win. Just so long as they have a champion heading out of this show. Just so long as they have that belt, there's nothing that they're going to complain about. There's nothing they want to complain about. They are more than happy with how things will end up in that regard. But I also think, in their own way, they might risk it all against each other in order to be the champion. They might put it all on the line in order to win that title from the other. So that will be very interesting as well. Will that happen though? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just making speculation there. It might, it might not. But here comes one of, the new, one of the latest acquisitions to the NXT women's roster. She has made her impact already and she is looking to uh, make that impact the best it can be by taking a title home at the end of this evening. Charlotte heads towards the ring and uh, here tonight she is donned out. She is ready to go. Can she be the champion, however? You look back to this most recent uh, episode of NXT. Charlotte, Jazzy Gabbard, Kyrie Sane in the triple threat match. Gabbard was the one who took the fall. Charlotte didn't get pinned. Instead, she kind of watched uh, Kyrie Sane pick up the victory. And I think in her own ways, she was thinking about saving it for TakeOver. Saving it for tonight, where she could put everything on the line and try and be the champion. We'll see if that'll work out the way she intends it to or not. But either way, Charlotte certainly has a strong crowd uh, support here tonight. She has her problems with Trifecta herself. It was her and Kyrie Sane who were meeting in a one-on-one -on -one matchup a few weeks back when Jazzy Gabbard came from the backstage area, attacked both women, laid them out, and held up the title. Sure, that would have gone after both of them, but there is one woman who it would have affected more than the rest, and that is the NXT Women's Champion. She's the one with a giant target on her back in this one. She's the one who doesn't need to be pinned in order to lose that NXT Women's Championship. She is the one who wants to keep that title around her waist in any way, shape or form. Kyrie Sane heads towards the ring, looking to keep that title firmly around her waist, not around Charlotte's, and certainly not around Trifecta. As I talked about this on NXT and I will bring it up again, it feels like every time Kyrie Sane has to defend that title, the numbers game are against her. Takeover San Antonio, it was the iconic duo. Takeover Orlando, it was Trifecta. Here tonight, it's a fatal four-way. Will she be pinned to lose her NXT Women's Championship? Will she not be involved in a decision to lose her title? Or will she come raining down with that insane elbow on someone and find a way to hold on to that title here at the start of Takeover Chicago? It's going to be one hell of a night. But can Kyrie Sane kick off the night? for NXT by holding on to that NXT Women's Championship. Can she do exactly what she wants and exactly what she must in her eyes in order to retain that title? It is certainly going to be a personal one between these two. It is certainly going to be one that I cannot wait to see. Who is going to be the NXT Women's Champion? Who is going to hold that title? It's just as simple as that, really. Obviously, the work to become the champion is far from it. The belt is held up in the air for us all to see. And now these four women get ready to meet in the ring. Only one can be champion. Who will it be? Who will be NXT Women's Champion? We find out the bell rings and we're ready to go in this one. And immediately, Trifecta are trying to thin the herd, should it say. Should it be said, splitting it down the middle there, going after Charlotte and Kyrie Sane. They can get rid of them, maybe they can have a one-on-one -on -one match with each other. But here we go now. We are underway here at TakeOver. Only one of these four women is going to be NXT Champion, NXT Women's Champion. Who's it going to be? Trifecta swapping things up here. Blanchard going after Sane now. Charlotte going after Gabbert. Here we go. This is where things can get problematic. This is where things are going to break down big time. Sane against Blanchard in the ring right now. But on the outside, we have the alpha female using the surrounding vicinity to her advantage. Both sides just brawling with one another in the early goings. Blanchard with a takedown and a flurry of strikes. Inflicted onto Charlotte there. 
But Charlotte able to fight back, and there goes Blanchard to the outside. Now, courtesy of Sane, Gabbert into the ring pole, and it's all breaking down on the outside. And <clears throat> Kyrie Sane and Charlotte are going after each other now. Oh, but Charlotte turns her attention back towards Tessa Blanchard there. That was only temporary at best. And that means that, oh, Sane is the target of uh, Jazzy Gabbard once more. Charlotte, the, t the target of Tessa Blanchard. It is all breaking down. You had a kick off a takeover. You can tell that there is no allegiance between any side. Everyone is after the other. Even Trifecta may even resort to that, but they haven't gone after each other yet, which has to be showing that their alliance is shining through. All four women in the ring right now. Jaw break a counter. There goes Blanchard to the outside again. Interesting about this match to be aware of is you cannot win this one on the outside. Most uh, fatal four-way matches usually force count anyway. Not this one, however. Has to be won in the ring. <clears throat> and so the decisions of Blanchard and Charlotte to continue to fight on the outside here might not be their strongest idea due to the fact that they simply can't win out there. Kyrie Sane looking for some kind of power bomb. Whoa, look at that. Feeds it through. Does Jazzy Gavin and goes in for a cover now. Looking to try and put this one away to be the champion. Oh, it's a kick out. Tessa Blanchard. Oh, here we go. They have no res they have no choice but to resort to this. Blanchard and uh, Gavin having to square off against each other here. What a DDT there. What a DDT by Tessa Blanchard. And Charlotte returns to the ring now. <clears throat> Charlotte going after both sides to trifecta here as uh, Kyrie Sane slowly gets up to her feet. Oh, she takes them all out. And Sane has to go back outside the ring for a moment. Charlotte goes for the cover. Blanchard there to break it up almost immediately. All the four women back in the ring, but only. Uh, there we go. They're all up on their feet as well. Backstabber there by Blanchard. Spinning sidewalk slam from Gabba. Trifecta have this one. Fairly under lock and key right now. But of course only one of them could be the NXT Women's Champion from the second rope here. Blanchard, drop kick. And this matchup keeps on going here. Keeps on just being, a, a, you know, very confusing to witness. Very much so, just a beat down from all sides. Trifecta though, they are doing such an incredible job of maintaining the control in this one. They have split either side and they have made it about them. However, they're both still standing. They will have to fight each other in order to be NXT Women's Champion. Charlotte takes the sledgehammer away there. Meanwhile in the ring, Tessa Blanchard, single under DDT. And oh, take down there by, by Tessa Blanchard going after Jazzy Gabbard here. And Charlotte in the midst of this all will go to the top rope here. Blanchard right there though to be able to stop it. Blanchard going to risk it all. Top rope. Hurricane and a Charlotte. Charlotte goes out of the ring as well. No she doesn't. She stops herself just before she goes outside. And Sane now winding it up. Running forearm in the corner. Blanchard's in trouble. Gabbard though back in the ring. Trying to make the savior for a tag. For a tag team partner oh but a big boot there is all that she'll run into Tessa Blanchard on the outside here spear in the ring by Charlotte Sane goes outside of the ring as well Charlotte can look to win the title in the ring against Gabbard here but Gabbard kicks out early on from that spear We are witnessing just total chaos. There's no other word for it. But Charlotte could look to try and close in on the title right now. But they're all they're all jetting it into the ring. But not to stop the figure eight from being locked in here. Locked in. And uh, Tessa Blanchard makes the save. To stop Jazzy Gabba tapping out maybe. But Charlotte now with Gab with a Blanchard up on his shoulders. Hangs out to dry on the ropes there. Trifecta are down. Sane looking to nick the cover there. Not going to happen. Sane now will go to the top rope. Is she thinking insane elbow? Well, if she was, Charlotte brought her down off the top rope and a kick out there at two by Kyrie Sane though. 
Perfecto want to be the champions right now. They've got to change something quick because they are just laying in the ring. Well, they are just laying there as Charlotte and Kyrie Sane are beating one another up to be the champion. Oh, here we go up to their feet finally. It's uh, Jazzy Gabbard there, but oh, she runs right into a backpack stunner. Yes, courtesy of Charlotte. Down goes Gabbard. Forearm there. Absolutely corked Blanchard in the face. Blanchard, forearm of her own. Kicks her in the gut. And another single unhook DDT. But she cannot capitalize on it. Charlotte makes sure of that one. Gabbert looking on. Powerbomb cover. Broken up. And oh my goodness, that leaves Trifecta alone in the ring with one another. Wait, no, it doesn't. Jazzy Gabbert removes. Removes Tessa Blanchard and leaves herself alone with the champion. But the champion fighting back just as well. Counter there though. Oh, the double-handed choke bomb in the ring. Jazzy Gabba looking to steal one. Charlotte bringing herself up to her feet. But it's okay. Kyrie Sane kicked out. Charlotte and Blanchard still fighting on the outside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the ring. The Omega Slam. The Omega Slam connects. Charlotte brought down. As two is Blanchard. Gabbard looking to steal the cover here. She pins Kyrie Sane for the title. Oh, and oh, she just kicked out. I think Charlotte tried to make the save as well and took out the referee in the process. Intentional or not, the referee is down in this one. Oh, no. Gabbard again, though, with Sane. A second Omega Slam, but no referee to make that count. This is disastrous right now. Gabbard hooking the leg. We have an effective three count here, but no one to make the count. Oh, the referee screwing over Trifecta there. Has to be said, there's no other way for it. Tilt a whirl, sidewalk slam there. And Gabbard resorts to rolling out of the ring. Now both women here going after the champion or wanting a piece of the champion at the very least. Saying they're fighting back, Harakarana. Spear by Charlotte in the ring. Tessa Blanchard in huge trouble. Oh, the insane elbow to try and break things up there. I don't think that was a, a true intention of... Uh, oh, what a lariat there by Jazzy Gamma. She's back in the ring. She is trying to help out her tag partner here. But look at this by Kairi Sane. Landslide to Gabbard. But Gabbard bats herself up to her feet like it was almost nothing. But another landslide could be on its way. And indeed it is. Cover by Sane to be the champion. But wow. Gabbard kicks out almost right away there. Tessa Blanchard. Single underhook DDT to the champion. And a takedown there by, by Blanchard on Gabbard. It is all broken apart now. It is all gone to insanity in order to be the champion. Tessa Blanchard locking in an armbar here. Will, uh, will, will Kyrie Sane tap out? Will Tessa Blanchard be the champion? Is she going to achieve it? No, Kyrie Sane looks to be stretching her way out of it. All four women have risked so much to be champion in this one. But only, oh, wheelbarrow suplex to the champion there. Going up high. Well, that plan got stuffed. Both Charlotte and Blanchard there had something in mind but couldn't capitalize on it. Sane able to counter Jazzy Gabbard there. Oh, and a hefty punt in the gut as well. But a counter now. Uh-oh. Tessa Blanchard's going for the cover on Charlotte. Something needs to be done. No, Charlotte kicks out. Oh, but a takedown there by Gabbard on her friend. Clubbing away at Tessa Blanchard. And Jazzy Gabbard has a plan in motion. She's covering Blanchard. She's using the ropes to her advantage. Gabbard with the cover. But old Blanchard kicks out. Big boot though takes down her friend. Charlotte looks to steal the cover there. Desperation kicking in for that side there. Curry saying it up with a big boot. Leg drop to Blanchard. Charlotte might think about going up high. Big boot brings her down. 
Nearly everyone is down. The only one standing right now is Jazzy Gabbard. Double arm. Choke bomb to Kyrie Sane. One, two. Jazzy Gabbard is the NXT Women's Champion. Trifecta have achieved it. On this night in Chicago, they got the title they wanted, but the alpha female is the one holding it. We have a new NXT Women's Champion, and it's Jazzy Gabbard. She overcame the other three in the ring. She had to overcome her own, her own teammate in Tessa Blanchard to do it, but she has done it. We kick things off here tonight in Chicago with an absolute mad, mad match here with that fatal four-way, but it resulted in one outcome. Jazzy Gabbard is the new NXT Women's Champion. Trifecta, though, more importantly than that, have achieved what they set out to do. They have waited for that title to be around one of their waists for the longest time, and it happened, and it happened by Gabbard pinning Sane. Wow. That, what a way to kick things off here at NXT TakeOver. Let's keep on going. There's no other way of saying it. Let's keep on going here. If that's how this night is going to kick off, then I want this one to keep on going. Coming up next, the NXT Global Championship is up for grabs. It's No Way Jose challenging the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. Well, here we go. Let's keep this thing rolling on, and Chicago's about to be one hell of a conga party. It gotta get itself lined up and ready to go. The Fiesta is rolling into town, but will he, ro will he roll out with the NXT Global Championship around his waist? No way Jose is on his way towards the ring. He became the number one contender a few weeks back, winning a triple threat match involving Dean Ambrose and Shelton Benjamin, and he had uh, caused the... Um, he had drawn the ire, drawn the attention of the NXT Global Champion, Pete Dunne, saying that there were some guys who didn't deserve the title at all, and that No Way Jose was undoubtedly one of those guys. And now, No Way Jose has his chance to be champion here tonight. The last time No Way Jose was a takeover, he fought a false can anyway matchup against Big Cass. He fought one hell of a personal matchup against Big Cass in that one, but he got the victory that counted the most. He made it happen, and he made himself a star in many ways on that night, a star deserving of this opportunity here in Chicago to become the NXT Global Champion. He has got a tougher, a tougher uh, thing to achieve here tonight, he's got a tough competitor to overcome, but it certainly sounds as if the NXT TakeOver crowd is on his side here. They are cheering him on as he lines up the party for later on. No way Jose, pretty confident he can be the number one contender. Once again, though, like Tessa Blanchard, No Way Jose kind of unintentionally, but in his own sake, uh, got the night off last week. Uh, well, this last NXT. He was supposed to be facing Corrin in the main event. I bet he's glad he didn't now because Cesaro started going after Corrin before that matchup could begin. However, his opponent, not so lucky. Pete Dunne had to go one-on-one -on -one with Cesaro and ended up tapping out to the sharpshooter. However, has that derailed the global champion? I don't think it has. When it comes to these two men being in the same ring as one another, NXT, uh, the global champion, Pete Dunne, has done his best, no pun intended there, to make sure that Jose is not the one standing. The last time they both met in a ring, Pete Dunne laid him out with a bitter end. So make no mistake about it, Pete Dunne is certainly feeling fired up here in his own eyes to, be, to uh, remain the NXT global champion. You see the scowl of the bruiserweight as he comes towards the ring. If there's only one thing he is interested in, it is beating the NXT global champion. It is beating No Way Jose to achieve that that he's got to do here. And I imagine he will take pride in doing it. It was at the last takeover where while Jose was beating Big Cass, he was becoming the global champion, beating the Big Show and Kurt Angle to achieve it. And now... He heads into his first title defense with that belt. Can he hold on to it here tonight in Chicago? We've already seen one title change hands. Will another one? We're about to find out. Crowd here in Chicago is certainly amped up for it. And there is that NXT Global Championship that, the, that both men will be fighting for. No way Jose and Pete Dunn looking opposite one another. Knowing that this could be their moment. This could be their time. Jose is amped up here. 
can he become though? NXT Global Champion. I have talked about this before, you know, when it comes to being in the ring, he is a super serious competitor. He takes things very seriously. He does not let you walk all over him. He takes himself very, very seriously indeed, and he's going to look to do that here tonight in order to become the NXT Global Champion. He is taller than uh, Pete Dunne. He is stronger than Pete Dunne. But does he have the capabilities to become NXT Global Champion? You could argue Dunne is the more talented of the two, which I, to be fair, I'd stand by. Dunne is certainly the more aggressive of the two, but is this going to be one of those occasions where No Way, Ho where no Way Jose is just going to be able to overcome him and remain Oh, sorry, uh, and become, rather, the NXT Global Champion. We'll find out. Both men looking, uh, looking opposite one another, and here we go. The bell rings. We are underway between these two men. Side headlock there by Pete Dunne, and, he and he's sitching things in now on No Way Jose to kick things off. Jose with a leg. Uh, leg scissors locked there, but Dunne quickly gets his way out of it, and a cheap shot there in the corner of a tire by Pete Dunne will give him that advantage. Here we go again between the two. From behind now, Pete Dunne is able to go faster. He's able to work around the body of No Way Jose and take that early advantage. Body lock applied here now. Drives him down and knee in the face there of Jose. Pete Dunne feeling confident early on and telling Jose there, come on, what have you got? Well, that's exactly what No Way Jose has right there. That shoulder tackle. Pete Dunne, a little bit taken aback by it, responds by, with a forearm there. And here we go now, Dunne in the turnbuckle. Big time Irish whip off the ropes. Step up in Zagiri, but Jose ducked underneath it there. And a belly to belly brings the global champion down. Irish whip now. Oh, what a big boot there. That one corked the champion. That one cracked him big time, but a good counter there by Pete Dunn sends him up and over. Can the global champion turn things around once again here? Is this Pete Dunn's time? At Chicago to cement himself as the global champion. German suplex there. That one called him rough. Big time thrust kick into the gut there. Short arm clothesline after it. Jose goes down. Done into the first cover of this matchup. Hoping to retain the title. But Jose kicks out early on. Say what you will about Pete Dunne, he's doing a good job right now. And he's showing his strength already. And he's doing it again here with Jose up on his shoulders. Pete Dunn is going to plant him face first into the turnbuckle there. And come running in with a knee to follow up after it. But Jose is getting himself up to his feet. He's bringing himself up there and he's fighting on. Much to the chagrin of Pete Dunn there who throws him up against the ropes. Goes for the cover there. Doesn't hook the leg but just goes for it to kick out again though at one. Counter by Jose now, and here goes. Here goes Jose, firing himself up a little bit here, getting that, getting that conga line up and running. In the in the uh, attempts to become the NXT Global Champion, look at the strength of him there to hit that, and the knee drop that follows up after it. Say what you will about No Way Jose, but there's no doubt about it when it comes to being in the ring. He is on the money, time in and time out. He's got some good strikes right now on Pete Dunne there. Might be thinking something big, but a good counter there by Pete Dunne denies that from being the case. Dunne now turns things around. And a German suplex there, he gets another one. Bridges after it, looking to put Jose away, but wow, a very early kick out there. Means that that isn't going to be happening. In the corner now goes Jose with Pete Dunne. Oh, and again. Can't get that step up in Zagiri. It gets taken down. And the global champion rolling out of the ring to recover. No way Jose getting amped up and ready to go here. They roll out of the ring, which is Pete Dunne. Which is Pete Dunne's calling to take advantage. Rib first into the barricade there on more than one occasion. And head first now. Dunne. Puts him up on his shoulder. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, Snake Eyes on the barricade from the global champion. Pete Dunne not messing around there as he looks to retain the title. And look at this. Just feeling awfully confident about himself. Oh, well, no way. Jose lays down on the outside. Is Dunne going to be happy to take the count out there? Referee intervening. I'm not too sure that Dunne wanted to go back outside. 
And that has significantly helped Jose beat the count. Pete Dunne there trying to shove his head in there. Go for that headbutt on Jose. No way Jose did good though to counter it. Irish whip now in the corner. Clubbing blow into the back. And he returned the favour from outside with a snake eyes in the ring. Oh, and Jose amped up here. Jose going to line it up. That fastball punch on its way. And he corked the global champion with it. Into the cover goes Jose to be the winner. No. An early kick out there by Pete Dunne. But here goes Jose now, looking for the cutthroat side slam. Looking to become champion. He locks it in. Cutthroat side slam. Cover by Jose for the title. There's two and a kick out from Dunn. Pete Dunn hangs in there. The global champion still just about fighting on here. But now his back is up against the wall. But he's fighting on. He counters. Big time blow in the back there. Oh, he rolls out of the way though. But no way Jose just quicker on the draw. Another knee in the back there. Oh, this is getting problematic right now. For Pete Dunne, his global championship hopes and dreams could be going up in smoke all of a sudden because of no way Jose. No way, Dunne. He counters it. Hard elbows snuck his way out of that one. And done now. Suplex of some sort. Oh, he just dumps him off to the side there. Pete Dunne, though, needed to do something. Jose counters, though. Back body drop now from No Way Jose. Dunne slips out of the way of it. Gets a jab for his trouble. Counters the Irish whip. Brings him back in. Hefty knee in the gut. Big time back and forth counters there by both sides. Risking it all to be champion. Pete Dunne. German suplex and Jose goes down again now done all of a sudden has a little bit more control to work with throws him into the turnbuckle this time he gets the step up in Zagiri and that could be the calling that Pete Dunne needs to finish things out step up in Zagiri forearm in the face this could be it done bitter end the bruiser weight with the cover. The bruiser weight with the count. The bruiser weight with a title still around his waist as he leaves Chicago. Pete Dunne retains the NXT Global Championship here tonight. The bruiser weight had his back against the wall more than once, but he was able to overcome it. He was able to hang on to that NXT Global Championship, and he was able to hang on. To the victory over No Way Jose here tonight in Chicago. That is one title changed hands, one title successfully defended. Certainly going to be an interesting one by the time we head in to the main event later on tonight. But there is victory for Pete Dunne. Happy days for him indeed. He's overcome No Way Jose and he has shut down any hopes of a conga party or a fiesta here in Chicago tonight. There is going to be no party for No Way Jose. Just recovering from the beatdown that the, that the Bruiserweight gave him and the wrath of the bitter end. A great night so far of action at NXT TakeOver. We're going to keep on going on here. Coming up next for the NXT Tag Team Titles, it is going to be one hell of a one. It is a newly formed duo, though, of Hiroshi Tanahashi and Tyler Bate taking on the NXT Tag Team Champions. Sanity up next. Oh, well, oh, well, here we go. NXT Tag Team Titles on the line, and the first man to make his way out is Tyler Bate here. Coming towards the ring. Bait, of course, was the first one to truly get involved with Sanity. They kind of kicked this whole thing off. <clears throat> Bait was... Um, <clears throat> he had a one-on-one -on -one match against Sawyer Fulton. He was victorious over the big guy from Sanity. But it did not end there. After the match was done, Tyler Bait was beaten down by Sanity in that one. Then, the week after, uh, uh, Bait took on Eric Young, the leader of Sanity and found himself being beaten down by him in the ring with a steel chair. When Killian Dane came in to add to the troubles, along came the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi, to the rescue to make his return on NXT and to pretty much result in this match happening. Two weeks ago, um, or well, a week and a half ago rather, probably the best way of saying it, Tyler Bate watched on as Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated Sawyer Fulton and then over the week between uh, this uh, between the penultimate NXT and this and, and the last NXT we just saw 
the match was made for takeover. This tag team matchup was made. This is going to happen right here, right now, right here. Uh, I don't know why I said right here twice, but we'll cross over that one. Here comes the ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. The last time he walked into takeover, he was in as high spirits as he was, uh, as he is right now. But the difference was last time, he didn't win the he didn't win the NXT Championship. He lost to Corin in the main event. He put on one hell of a fight. He probably put on one of the best matches the takeover has seen. But it wasn't enough to be the winner. Now here tonight, he looks to change things around in that regard. He looks to twist things. He looks to be the NXT Tag Team Champions with Tyler Bate here. Tanahashi and Bate, like I said, I mean, yeah, they won on NXT. Yeah, they beat American Alpha, but they are only now in their second matchup as a tag team. How can they hope to take those tag team titles away from, uh, uh, from Sanity? Just how do they do that? How do they make that happen? How do they run with it is the question. I would I would be very surprised if uh, Tanahashi and Bate won here tonight. I'd be surprised in a good way. I'd be very happy for them that they are the tag team champions. But in the same breath, I'm not too sure if I can see it happening or not because it just seems so difficult for something like that to happen. It just seems almost improbable for something like that to happen. So, we'll see if that'll be the case or not, but here come the Tag Team Champions. Sanity are on their way towards the ring. The Tag Team Champions headed into last takeover as challengers and left champions. Now they look to do the same. Now they look to flip those around here tonight. They look to leave as champ. They look to come in as champions and leave as champions. Rather, I think would be the best way of saying it. They look to flip around the first bit and remain and remain as the champions. They come out in full force here tonight. Eric Young, Killian Dane, and Sawyer Fulton all heading towards the ring. This is a group effort for Sanity to hold on to those tag team titles here. They have done their very best to cause problems between Sanity. Tanahashi and Bait and now here tonight that will all come to an eventful end but who will be the champion at the end of the night who will hold those NXT tag team titles Sanity as I said headed into last takeover challenges they left the champions they beat American Alpha finally to win those NXT tag team titles now they look to hold on to them here tonight will that be what takes place though will that be what we will see with our own very eyes here tonight a takeover it is a very impromptu matchup in, in many ways but it is a matchup that all four men must be prepared at their utmost for otherwise one little slip up and you can see the titles changing hands or one little slip up from the other team and you can see Sanity put their foot on the pedal never let go and just be ramming into that wall consistently until Tanahashi and Bates cannot get back up and you see the tag team champions and the two are of course going to be in action in this one in Eric Young and Killian Dane. Sawyer Fulton going to be at ringside. Will he be a difference maker in this one? Will he be someone to cause any problems for the ace or for Tyler Bate? We'll find out. We will find out indeed. It's going to be very, very interesting how things will go in this one. So let's see. Let us see indeed. Time for attacking one another from behind is over. As we saw in this past NXT following uh, Tanahashi and Bates' victory of American Alpha. The time for attacking each other from behind is over. The time for looking at each other face to face and fighting for those tag team titles is right now. It's impromptu for these two, but they've got to be prepared to work with one another. They've got to be prepared to make it stick. Hiroshi Tanahashi and Tyler Bate look to become the NXT Tag Team Champions. Tanahashi taking in the reaction from the Chicago crowd. Bait is focused. And on the other side of the ring, we see the looks of the champion. Sanity with those begrudging looks upon their faces because they see their opponents. They see their prey in many ways to them. And they look to overcome them right here tonight to become NXT, or to stay rather, the NXT Tag Team Champions. It's been a long road for Sanity to get to those titles. Can they hold on to them here tonight? Referee doing a very brave job by giving the uh, by trying to take the titles away from Sanity there. But here we go. The titles are up in the air. One title's changed hands. One title has remained. 
How will this one fare? It's going to be Tyler Bates starting things off against the leader of Sanity and Eric Young. And here we go. Tyler Bate wasting little time there with a nasty forearm there in the face. Look at it again, maybe a little bit of retribution for what happened on NXT those weeks back with the attacks of the steel chair, with the jumps from behind. With a jump this past NXT as well. Tyler Bate may well have had enough of the games trying to be played by Eric Young. But Young is happy to start things off how he wants to there with that DDT. Up on the second rope and look at how Eric Young is poised and ready to go here. Flying himself in and he catches him with the drop kick. It's a good start so far for Sanity. The leader taking a very strong path towards a potential victory here. Tyler Bate of course is very much so. Still a rookie in many regards, only 21 years of age, but a takeover. Orlando, he truly hit a big stage for him when he convincingly defeated uh, Mike Canellis. Defeated? Yeah, that's, that is English. Don't correct myself. Uh, Mike Canellis uh, in action with two Tyler drivers on that evening to uh, close out of the uh, victory against him. Now here tonight, he looks to become tag team champions with Hiroshi Tanahashi. Tanahashi tagged in now off the top rope. Oh, high fly flow in some ways from Tanahashi there. And now Tanahashi gets to have his hands on this man, a man who he has beaten before in singles action. But a man, well, two men rather. He's beaten both these guys in singles action, of course. But he's only facing them for the first time in tag team action. Eric Young with a back suplex there to bring Tanahashi down. And here we go, tagging in the beast from Belfast. Killian Dane is in here, and Tanahashi's going to be feeling the wrath of that one right about now. Tanahashi using his experience and his speed to his advantage there. Drop toe hold, and the big man goes down. Tanahashi and Bate going to have to work together with what they know in order to be victorious here. That didn't pan out the way they wanted it to. In the other turnbuckle now goes Tanahashi. Oh, this, this, this looks worrying. Sent into that turnbuckle. Oh, drop kicked back into it as well by Killian Dane. Brutal move. And Dane now right in front of Bate. Locks in the dragon sleeper here. Tanahashi in trouble a little bit. But he's able to move his arm around and find the ropes. The ace always knows a way to give himself an opening. What a chop there. Lighting up the chest of Killian Dane. This is where Tanahashi can go to work now. He brings Killian Dane closer towards the center of the ring and hits a cannibal sent on there to keep him down. It almost feels like even if he's taking on a big man, Tanahashi is never really the underdog. He always knows what he's doing. He always knows a way to find victory. Bate now in off the tag. Double elbows there. And Bate now going to have to deal with Killian Dane. This could be problematic for him. Hefty uppercut there by Dane now and a big brutish like uppercut as well staggers Tyler Bate a little bit Bate though still won't go down maybe that big boot will bring him down oh no here comes the strength now of Killian Dane look at how easily he executes this deadlift powerbomb down goes Tyler Bate with ease And now Killian Dane has Tyler Bate in his clutches and he's walking him to the ropes there. Oh, but Bate able to counter. Sends him to the outside. Tanahashi going to make the most of this one. Tanahashi up on the top rope. Corkscrew sent top, but oh, I don't think he got all of that one. Tanahashi looked to almost clip himself on the barricade there. And I'm not too sure how much of, of Killian Dane he got. This one now, effectively a handicap match. Tyler Bates in trouble. Oh no, suplex there. Tanahashi trying to bring himself up to his feet, but he is slow to recover. And this is exactly what Sanity needs in order to be victorious. Tag mate here, Eric Young in. And he's getting confident now, calling Bates to his feet. Almost mocking the fact that Bates can't stand right now. Big time knee in the face. Oh, but Tanahashi back up to his feet. Eric Young 
Not able to get that neck breaker, took too long. And here comes Tyler Bate now. Double knee gut busted here, the leader of Sanity. Tyler Bate knows he's going to have to do a little bit on his own though. Tanahashi probably still reeling heavily from that one. Power bomb there and down goes Eric Young. Tyler Bate though, able to make it work. Snap German suplex to Eric Young. And here goes Bate now really, firing himself up. The ace wants back in. The ace is going to get back in. Tag made now. Tanahashi, the legal man here. Oh, drop toe, hold elbow, drop combination there. And in the midst of it all, the tag is made. Killian Dane in now off the tag. And a big time bicycle kick sends Tanahashi down. He's up to his feet, gets brought down with a running, just a running tackle. And another bicycle kick will bring him down. Poor referee brought down again there. Killian Dane hits a flying splash. That could be very worrying indeed for Tanahashi. Cover made. Bate doesn't uh, get involved because it's like he knew almost. It's like he knew that Tanahashi was going to kick out. And he most certainly did. Tanahashi stays in there. Sna <coughs> Snap German suplex. Taking the very move that we had just seen Tyler Bate execute. Uh, Tanahashi not happy with being in Sanity's corner. He wants to do things his own way. Brings him over. Throws him into the turnbuckle. Flying forearm from Tanahashi there. But make no mistake about it. There's no escape for Killian Dane. Twist and shot from Tanahashi. Tag made into bait. We saw this on NXT. What they tried to make happen against American Alpha. Will it succeed this time? Oh my god, it could. Tyler Bate kicking the gut of Killian Dane. Look at the strength. Tyler Driver. He brings him round. He tags in Tanahashi now. And Tanahashi's going to prep himself up. Ready and rearing to go from up high. Tanahashi. High. Fly. Flow. The cover. Eric Young though went to stop it. Tyler Bate. Clocked Eric Young, but in the recoil of that, Eric Young clocked Tanahashi. Tanahashi down now. That was the moment to become Tag Team Champions, and they just couldn't seal it. That is going to be eating away in the mind. Oh, no. Oh, oh, up on the shoulders there. I thought he was thinking also the plantation there was Killian Dane. He most certainly wasn't. Electric chair, though, but Dane is on his own right now. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Killian Dane, though, should be all right. I mean, well, I say should be all right. He's got his power to rely upon. Dane, powerbomb, maybe. Crucifix, powerbomb of all kinds as well. Tanahashi, though, slips his way out of it. Neckbreaker to Dane. Man, Tanahashi there, just able to slide his way out of that one perfectly. Perfectly timed it. Comes in with a flying forearm. Dane goes down. Tanahashi now rooted on the path towards victory, maybe. No, stopped. Big boot in the face. It's amazing to watch Tanahashi just fighting on here, clubbing away. I know this is a tag team matchup, but Tanahashi certainly has been through so many wars in the past that he knows how to fight on in a case like this. But Wasteland by Dane there brings down Tanahashi. And now a chair slid in, I believe, by Sawyer Fulton. Killian Dane is going to look for it. Tanahashi could be done for unless he can do something urgently. He's going to look for the Ulster Plantation, but Tanahashi slipped his way out of it as quickly as he could. Tanahashi brings him in, knocks him down. Oh, but look at that from Killian Dane there. Tanahashi was trying to create separation for a second. And Killian Dane launched himself and brought him down. Tag made now into Eric Young. Tanahashi is in trouble. The ace is in trouble. Oh, but he's fighting in there still. Still, Tanahashi can go on. Up on the shoulders now. Concerns for Tanahashi again. Hung out on those ropes. The ace is in trouble now. Sanity know it. They can sense it. Pummeling away to Tanahashi there. 
So, uh, Eric Young going to make the tag. Does he think that? No, he's going up to the second rope here. I thought he might be thinking about tagging Dane. Back in. Went for the elbow. He missed it. Tanahashi counters. Drop toe hold. Tanahashi could be sensing something. He goes up to the top rope. Better act fast. Tanahashi not thinking high five flow. Oh, corkscrew said. Don't know. Tanahashi, you can see he's feeling the wear of this one. Twist and shout again though from Tanahashi. The crowd on their feet here. Yeah. Something big. They feel that something's big about to be on its way. And it most certainly will be. High, fly, flow. But all bait in too early there. And the referee telling him to get out of the ring. That's not going to do them any favours. Tanahashi up on that top rope again. And again. High, fly, flow. Cover by Tanahashi. There's two. Oh, my goodness. He kicked out of two of them. He kicked out of two high fly flows. Tanahashi must be thinking at this point, what else can he do? He goes up high again. Tanahashi went for the corkscrew sent on, but took too long. Eric Young moved out of the way. Eric Young will go to the top rope now. Tyler Bato tried to help his tag team partner, but uh, Eric Young got the elbow drop in. This is all breaking apart right now, and it's anyone's game. This led into the matchup. Anyone could be the NXT Tag Team Champions. What an elbow there from Eric Young. Hope for something there that just wasn't coming. Russian leg sweep there by Tanahashi, and he's going to back out of the ring. He is going to tag in Tyler Bate here. Tanahashi's been through an awful lot. The tag needed to be made ineffectively into Tyler Bate. And there's that gut buster now to the leader of Sanity. Sanity are kind of, they're almost wearing thin. Bait and Tanahashi still looking fairly fresh. Chop there in the chest though. And a big time lariat sends him over the top rope. Eric Young has turned things around once again. Tyler Bate needs to get up to his feet pretty quickly here. He is taking a long time to recover on the outside. Tanahashi coming in though. Able to make the save. And not only make the save, but try and go after uh, Eric Young. That didn't work though. Northern Lights suplex. Tanahashi down. And Eric Young stomping at Tanahashi. Going after the wrong man here. And Bate reminds him of that one. Tyler Bate throws Eric Young back into the ring. The matchup's still going on here, but how much of it is left? Headbutt there by Bait. How much more can he give? How much more can Sanity give? How much more does Tanahashi have left in him? The answers, it seems, are coming thicker fast in the next few seconds as move after move is being hit by Bait, but no response from Eric Young. Strike, a forearm. And he's going to throw him into the ropes. But how much more? How much more does he have in him? Here's the answer though. Snap Jim and suplex from Tyler Bate. Can he bring himself up to his feet? Fulton trying to get involved. But it may all be in vain. Tyler Bate is going to go for it. He brings in Eric Young. A Tyler drive out of Eric Young. Into the cover. Killian Dane can't make the save. Oh, but Fulton got himself involved. Come on. This should be over by now. The referee should have kicked Sawyer Fulton out right there. It's okay to do it on NXT, but not at a big stage like TakeOver. Not at a... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's, what's Fulton doing in the ring? Oh, Fulton could... Fulton looking to maybe try and jeopardize their matchup here. And oh, the referee's had enough of it. He is telling Fulton to get out of the ring. He is kicking Fulton backstage. Finally, finally something's done about it. Tanahashi tagged in. Tanahashi rolls up Eric Young. Will this be all? One, two. Oh, they did it. They did it. They made it happen. 
It was sloppy. It took everything, but they made it happen. Tanahashi and Tyler Bates are the tag team champions. Oh my goodness, it can happen. Anything can happen against Sanity, it seems. And anything did just happen in the commotion of it all, in the confusion of it all. They made it work. They made it happen. Tanahashi pinned Eric Young. We have new NXT Tag Team Champions. The Ace and Tyler Bate have done it. My God, what a what a quest that one was for them to achieve. What work that took for them to achieve. But new champions have been crowned here tonight once again in Chicago. Absolutely incredible. Wow, 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 wow. What a night it has been, and it just keeps on going on with these great matches. But now we turn into a matchup that, while it could be great, it is going to be beyond personal as well. These two men hate one another. These two men have seen each other try to end, well, have seen one side try to end a career. And now what the other side looks to return that favor and looks to make it happen. Here tonight at TakeOver, Leo Rush, Edge, no holds barred. Rush wants redemption for Edge trying to end his career so many uh, months back. Will it happen here tonight? We'll find out up next. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see how personal things can be. Let's see what happens when things get so personal that something needs to be done about it. Here comes Leo Rush towards the ring, ready to settle this business once and for all. He has the takeover crowd on his side. He has the people here in Chicago completely on his side. The man of the hour is ready to make things happen. Leo Rush is ready for this one. It has been months since he was lost on a takeover. And now the retribution can finally happen. So long he will have waited for this. So long he has pent himself up for this one. How ready is Leo Rush for this year tonight? How ready is he to try and settle things once and for all? To finally, finally shut the door on everything that happened so much long, so long ago. This is the man who tried to end his career. This is the man who tried to put away Leo Rush and make sure that he would never come back. But much to his chagrin, he is back. Leo Rush is here tonight, and Edge is going to have to go face to face with him and try and put him down for good. They met face to face this past NXT. Rush said he wasn't going to hit Edge. He said he'd save it for takeover. Edge didn't seem to reciprocate that too kindly as he took a, a, a blatant cheap shot at Rush, laid him out of the ring with the execution and the spear, and stood above him, proud of what he had accomplished, as if he had achieved something great. Well, Leo Rush is going to finally try and return for the favor here. This is underway between these two men. No holds barred, it begins here at TakeOver. Leo Rush couldn't wait a second longer to get his hands on edge, and here we go now, underway in this one. Stomps and strikes, the only things Leo Rush has in him to put out to edge, the only thing he can do right now with all the hatred in his mind. But a DDT by Edge will bring it. Uh, will bring Rush right back down. Just watching these two men now squaring up with one another, knowing the hatred they both have. Just who will be able to execute the majority of it? Spinning kick there by Leo Rush, and the man of the hour, looking down there. And Edge, he's ready. He is amped up and ready to go for this one. And let him loose we shall. Here goes Leo Rush now, but a counter there by Edge. Edge is going to try and wrestle his own matchup here. Edge is going to try and take things slowly but surely. Edge knows though, has he bit, uh, much, uh, there must be a thought process in Edge that has he bitten off more than he can chew. There must be that running through the mind of Edge at this point. This is huge for Edge. This is huge for Leo Rush as well. Is this so wise from Edge? I mean, you know, whatever made him think about putting out Leo Rush that many months ago certainly wasn't wise. And now does he think he is wise to try and put up this fight against Leo Rush here tonight? Knowing all the feelings that, that Rush will have surging through him. Running drop kick in the corner by Leo Rush right now. But he is not going to continue on with the attack just yet. 
It is time to get his revenge. The steel chair brought into the mix. And clattered across the head of Edge. This, everything that Leo Rush does, I have no problem against it. Edge deserves each and every strike of that chair and more. This is what you have done to this man, Edge. This is what you have done to Leo Rush. But Edge can turn things around on a point of the head there. Just so, just such a prick. There's no other way of saying it. That is exactly what Edge is. Oh, what a counter there by Leo Rush. Took him down with the head scissors. That didn't go the way that he planned on it. Rush now back at him with a steel chair. Once again, clattering it into the back of Edge this time. Leo Rush wants Edge up on his feet. He wants to look him in the eyes as he brings this one down. An almighty chair shot into the head of the rated R superstar. And he deserves it. He absolutely deserves it. Leo Rush is not letting Edge get anything in. He is not going to even think about trying to wrestle a smart match here. About trying to pan himself out for the long run. He's here for revenge. He's here to get it over and done with. This isn't about that sweet feeling of revenge for Leo Rush. This is about just beating Edge down until he can't get up anymore. The steel steps now brought into the mix and into the back of Edge. Leo Rush just wants this done. Oh, he's trying to slam Edge there, but he can't. Clobbering blow into the back there by Edge. Where is Edge going to go? To the turnbuckle. Face first into the turnbuckle goes Leo Rush and a kick to bring him down there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Edge. Execution of Leo Rush. Get up. Get up, Rush. Yes, Edge was looking for something, but Leo Rush was able to counter it right away there. Spinning kick again brings down. Brings down Edge. Both men looking for something there, but it was uh, Edge who got it first. Fireman's carry, flapjack, and I think Rush might have grazed the, uh, the steel steps there. Cover now on Rush. And a kick out there, but only barely. Come on, Rush. Come on, turn things around. Oh no, oh no, Edge is in the turnbuckle. Edge wants to finish things off right now. Edge gonna look for it. Spear by Edge. Edge got the spear on Rush. Oh no, don't tell me after everything we've gone through, this is how it'll end. You sick son of a bitch. Edge with a steel step shot into Leo Rush. He wants to finish things off. He wants to go even further, does Edge. He's going to fly elbow drop now. The referee goes down again in this one. But it won't make a difference. DQs are still legal as. I'm sorry, are still, well, you know, the rules are still that DQs can't happen. Cover by Edge. And Leo Rush kicks out right away. That was Edge's own fault that brought that. Up. He knocked down the referee. He didn't go for the cover right after the spear. Oh, Edge with steps in hand and just smashed him into Leo Rush's face. And into the back of Rush now. Rush moves out of the way though. Tried to drop kick Edge there but couldn't get him. Is able though to take the steps away from him. Leo Rush with great strength to put Edge up on his shoulders now. F5 from Rush. Yes. Does Leo Rush stand a chance of putting things away? He's going to bring him in. Rush hour! He got all of it. Leo Rush is going to go for one step more to end it, though. He brings himself to the top rope. Leo Rush with a frog splash. An almighty frog splash. One, two. Oh, my God. Edge kicked out at two. And Rush can hardly believe it. So can I, so can I. And he takes the chair to Edge now. Bashing it into him repeatedly. Time after time there. No remorse from Leo Rush. And he's pending himself up here for one final run. Counters Edge there. And he, oh, he went for the running forearm. But Edge countered. Leo Rush counters in tow though. Spinning kick in the gut now. 
Whatever Leo Rush was looking for, he kind of lost the momentum to go for it. Hard punch by Edge. Duck under, but a clothesline. Edge bringing himself back up to his feet. And look what Rush has in his hands again. A little friend into the back. Come on, Leo Rush. Just close things out right now. Let us... Let us finally get closure for all of this. Let us finally see it come to an end. Leo Rush, pedigree to Edge. I think he busted him open in the process. He did. Edge is busted open. Leo Rush can close things out again. This time it has to be it. Frog splash from Leo Rush. Hooks the leg of the bloodied Edge. One, two. Retribution has been sealed for Leo Rush. Revenge has happened. Leo Rush has done it. A takeover. He came in with one simple task. Revenge. And he got it. He finished it. He achieved it. Leo Rush is your winner here tonight at TakeOver. Here tonight in Chicago. Yes. That is what Retribution is all about. That is what closing the door is all about. Leo Rush did it. Well done, is all I can say. Well done, Leo Rush, for finally putting this behind you. It is done. Rush can move on now to his future. Maybe one day Leo Rush's future will be gold, but right now, tonight, it is time for our main event. It is time for the NXT Championship. The gold is on the line between Cesaro and Corrin. Cesaro was the only one who'd step up to the plate, the only one who had challenged Corrin for that title, and now he decide, And now we will find out here tonight in Chicago if it will be enough to make it happen. Corrin has gone through almost everyone he can at TakeOver, has gone through as many people as he can to hold on to that title. He looks to add another one to the list here tonight in Cesaro. This is a big match. This is the main event of NXT TakeOver Chicago. Everything is on the line here for NXT. It is up next. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm amped up and I'm ready to go. And I cannot wait a second longer for this main event. Cesaro comes towards the ring. And the Chicago crowd is cheering him on. Is this Cesaro's moment to make it happen? To be the NXT champion that this brand can be proud of? Is it Cesaro's time? Here tonight. He has made an almighty impact since arriving on NXT. And now he looks to make the biggest impact possible. Here tonight in the main event of TakeOver. He looks to become the NXT Champion. 24 hours before a Money in the Bank ladder match that he has won previously, Cesaro looks to be the man of NXT, looks to be the face that we can all be proud of. I said about how long this road was and it all started because of Corin. He targeted Cesaro one night. He attacked him after his victory. And he took no remorse in laying him down with the clock strikes 12. Cesaro took that as a challenge. He saw that and saw that Corin wanted something to do with him. And he wanted the challenge. He took the challenge. And now they have traded it back and forth, laying each other out. Cesaro with the most emphatic one, I would argue, this past NXT. A power bomb into, a, into Corin's personal locker to close out the evening. But what made that scene all the more surreal is just seconds later... Corin was still finding a way up to his feet. The champion was still standing. And now here tonight at TakeOver, he looks to keep on standing and he looks to remain the NXT champion. This one between these two got very personal, very fast indeed. And now we see if it'll reach its conclusion. Corin heads towards the ring. He has been NXT champion since November. That is almost seven months now that this man has been champion. And he looks to keep it on going towards Brooklyn. The champion heads towards the ring with that smirk as he always does. With that confidence within him as he always does. He has defended that belt against Okada twice. He has defended well, against Okada. He has defended that belt against Tanahashi twice. He has taken on some of the very best and beaten them and here tonight at TakeOver he looks to make it happen again he looks to be the champion again is he ready is he prepared to defeat Cesaro here tonight I said how Tanahashi was his toughest test and I still believe he was however 
Cesaro has played his own games against him and has made it work just as well. So here tonight, when they both come to that technical brawling style of offense, when they both use the same moves, when they both use the same plan of action in order to be victorious, can Cesaro make it work better than Corin? Or is Corin going to retain that title again here tonight? It's been an emphatic night of action. Two titles have changed hands. One title has remained. This will be the decider in regards to that. But Corin does not care for that. He cares for himself. He cares for that title. He cares about being the face of this brand. Whether everyone appreciates it or not. That is what they have to deal with. Oh, here we go. It is the main event. Of TakeOver. It is time. To do this. He hands the belt. To the referee. Cesaro takes a good look at it. The main event of TakeOver is seconds away from kicking off. What a night it has been. And what a way to close it out here. We are ready to go. Cesaro and Corin for the NXT Championship. We are underway. And Cesaro comes flying out of the gates there with that drop kick. Going immediately after the NXT Champion. Corin though from behind. Just dumped him down on his back there. To kick things off. Immediately both men go swinging at one another. And only one really got the better of the two. The one got the better of the two. Here we go now though. Cesaro. Quick strikes against Corin. Single underhook suplex early on. And Cesaro's failing it here. But Corin getting right back up to his feet. Cesaro trying to get the early factor here. Trying to get the early strikes going. Counter though. Up on the shoulders now. What does Corin have in mind? Spinning them around a little bit. Into a cutter there. This is where things could be worrying for Cesaro. And this is where Corin looks to take away the arms of Cesaro early on. The knee driving down into the bicep there. But you're going to need to do more than that to keep the Swiss Superman down. Discus forearm and down goes the champion now. A very... Very back and forth. High octane style is what we're seeing here. Running up a cut in the corner. There he got all of that one. Stomping away now at the champion. But Cesaro couldn't get any more. Rake of the eyes there from Corin. What does the NXT champ look to do here? Send uh, Cesaro face first into the turnbuckle and go over and over and over again. Oh, and he got all of them as well. Cesaro wasn't prepared for that one. Corin most certainly was. Out on the apron now. Goes the champion. Elbow drop. That's certainly not something we're used to seeing from the from Corin. But he can. Yeah, he cannot capitalize on it. Cesaro with the counter there to bring him down. And now here goes pound for pound. One of the toughest guys in this in this universe. Deadlift, gut wrench, suplex to the 245 pounder. Counter there by Corin though. Turns things around once again. Emerald Flosion on its way maybe. No. Cesaro does a great job of countering it. Reverse DDT there. It's all about how people want the old Cesaro to return. The Cesaro that can break someone's jaw. I would not be opposed to it happening here tonight. Because it's because it's Corin. He deserves it. For everything he's done. He deserves it. He knows what he is doing to this brand and he takes pride in it, no less. Up and over the top rope now and a big clubbing, a little <coughs> clubbing blow will bring Cesaro down and we're on the outside here. Countouts are in effect, this is a normal matchup here. Corin, oh my goodness, oh just launched himself at Cesaro there. He definitely didn't get all of that one. The fight continues here on the outside. It keeps on breaking down between either side here. But it's Cesaro who sends him back into the ring. Cesaro who goes up to the top rope as well. Cesaro going to fly. Double axe handle countered. Backbreaker by Corin. Might have been looking for something there. But Cesaro did his best to counter it. And now here goes Cesaro with his incredible uh, innovative offense. Alpamir water slide there from Cesaro. And now what else has a Swiss Superman got in store? Double underhook. Stalling suplex. The absolute strength to hit that move. 
Corrin certainly reeling after that one. Good. What is Cesaro going to think about here now? He preps up the champ against the ropes. He's going to throw him away from them here. Springboard uppercut by Cesaro. Oh, Cesaro. He's looking for something. He's looking for something big. Cesaro feels it. Cesaro thinks he can make Corrin tap out and he's going to try for it. Sharpshooter locked in here on Corrin. Will this be it? I, I somehow seriously doubt it. I'm not going to hold my face up high, but you never know. Anything can happen. Corrin can tap out here. We could be in for a new NXT champion any second now. Corrin is not moving out of it. Oh, now he is. He finally escapes the hold and bats Cesaro backwards there. Forearm in the face. Oh, what's he going to do now? Snake eyes. And Corin. Oh, no. No, no, no. Double underhook brain buster. Cesaro's busted open because of it. And Corin takes his stride. Corin takes his confidence in it as well. Knowing that Cesaro's busted open. But Cesaro's still kicking out early enough. And look at that from the Swiss Superman there. Look at how he just popped right up to his feet and is denying the NXT champion a chance to recover here. This is Cesaro's time now. But Corin counted it. He throws him into the turnbuckle. Guillotine DDT there from Corin. And he will slowly bring himself back into the ring and he will return the favour for the attempted Submission, the Indian Deathlock applied onto Cesaro. Will Cesaro tap out here? He made Pete Dunne tap out on NXT. Can he force himself to tap out? He will not. He clocks Corrin in the face there. And a cravat suplex will turn the tides back into the favor of the Swiss Superman. He may well be busted open, but he is nothing if not a fighter. That is Cesaro to a T. And a big clothesline sends Corin up and over the, to the outside now. Things are most certainly breaking down between these two. The desire to become NXT champion is absolutely shining through here. Running tackle there. Sending his back into that apron once again. Looking for something on the outside. No. Cesaro counted it. The count up to six. Cesaro knows though he can't win the title by count out. He's been in this predicament before as the champion. He restarts the count. And he can keep on going on the outside here. But Corin played possum. And he sends Cesaro into the crowd. This is not where this matchup can afford to be. And Cesaro does good to quickly get himself back out. What is Oh, what an uppercut there from Cesaro. He's hooking him in. Cesaro swing. Into the barricade. Yes, yes, and yes. But how much more can this one keep on riling on here? The, the, both these sides have brought out the big guns, it feels like. But they are tiring themselves out in their attempts to be champion. Cesaro picks up Corin. Oh, my God. Oh, my. From out of nowhere. The neutralizer. Yes, yes, please let it be. Look at that. Neutralizer. Pinpoint accuracy drove Corrin into the mat. The move we needed to be. The move to crown a new champion. One, two, no. And not only did he kick out, but he kicked out with almost a smile on his face. Oh. Cesaro looks to keep on fighting. Corrin counters him though. What the hell is he doing now? Oh, brought him in for that backbreaker there. He's mocking Cesaro. Trying to make the trying to make the, the man come back up to his feet, even though he can hardly stand right now. And Corin's gonna do it again. Double underhook brain buster. And into the cover. Will this end it? No way. Please, Cesaro fight on. And he does! He kicks out at two. But he might not kick out of this one. Oh no. Please no. Corin 
Gonna look for it. Cesaro counters the clock strikes 12. He rolls up Corin for the title. One, two, no. Happened once tonight, but it won't happen again. Cesaro with a pop up uppercut. Please let that have been Swiss death. Oh, Corey's in the ropes. Oh, no. I thought that could have been it. I really got my hopes up there. That could have been the end. Cesaro's busted open and he's still fighting on here. He's doing everything to try and win that title. He will not give in. Not for a second. Here come the big moves now of Cesaro. Big strike after big strike. Huge suplex after another. But Corin slips out of it again. Clubbing blow in the back. And a Thez Press takedown and clubbing blows to the open wound. He sees the opportunity and he goes for it. Hard strike there. Corin now double under hook. Oh, gut buster. Cesaro rolling to the apron. Trying to catch his breath. Trying to take this moment to recover here. Oh, but Corin's not interested. Hefty blow brings him to the outside. The longer this match goes on, you'd hope the more it helps Cesaro. But it doesn't. It helps Corin because Cesaro is bleeding so heavily. I'm not even too sure he can see through all that blood. I don't even know if he's just fighting on instinct alone at this point. Cesaro, though, instinct or not, at the end of it all, is still fighting. And that's what matters most. Straight jacket powerbomb, maybe. He brings him, he brings Corin up. Does he have it in him to go for something big here? He does not. He might have been thinking buckle bomb, but he just didn't have the strength anymore. But now, maybe Cesaro has something in mind. He has something in mind that regards his strength. He's going to go for it here. The absolute pinnacle of strength from Cesaro. A trio of deadlift gut wrench suplexes after everything he has taken in this matchup, no less. There's the third. Can he do it? Can he secure a victory somehow? Core encounters him again. Running knee to the open wound. Cesaro rolls to the outside. Corin's going to the top row. Oh my god, just launched himself there, and both men are down. This is what it takes to be NXT champion. This is what it means to be the face of NXT, risking it all. And both men have absolutely risked it all in this one. They've put everything on the line, but only one of them's going to walk out with the crown. Only one of them is going to walk out with what they want so badly. Into the steps there goes Corin, and Cesaro had to do his best to restart the count. He's exhausted. He is busted open. Big time. But he is still going here to try and be the champion. He sends Corin back into the ring. But not before a big boot to the champion. Back in the ring we are now with both men. Cesaro still trying here to be the champion. More strikes wailing away. Blood for blood. Corin is bleeding. Oh, but a kick there. See how hefty that kick was there from Corin. Just turned things around. Might have kicked him. Might have kicked him so hard in the head that he could have done something to the busted open Cesaro. No! Double underhook brain buster. No! No! Corin's got him in for a face buster now. What is, he's just snapping here. Move after move, all that he can think of in his mind. Going after the head of Cesaro. Trying to put him away definitively. Fireman's carry cutter. And all those moves to the head will bring in one last one. Corin has him in. Can he go for it? Clock strikes 12. Is this it? Is it all over? Corin did what he had to do. And with one, two, three, he remains the NXT champion again.
God damn it. God damn it. He's done it. Corin holds on to fight another day. He fends off Cesaro. He is still the NXT champion. And after all that just went on in that matchup, after everything we just saw take place, after Cesaro sacrificing everything, busting himself open and putting it all on the line in order to be the champion, by the end of it all, Corin is champion. Still. He closed out, though, with an absolute flurry of moves to the head. He knew what he wanted to do, and he hit it with precision. And as a result of that, he holds on to the title again. Corin now looks towards, ta towards TakeOver Brooklyn this August, where he will defend that title next. But the question is, honestly, after everything we've seen, who is next? Who else can take on this man and try and beat him? I just don't know. But let's not dwell on the fact that Corin is still champion. Let's focus on the fact of how great this night of action was. Two new champions crowned. Great matches all over the shop. One of the strongest takeovers once again. What a night it has been here in NXT TakeOver Chicago. And tomorrow we do it all again with money in the bank. What a night that is going to be. You do not want to miss that one either. That ends NXT TakeOver. Thank you guys for watching. Take care guys. And ta -ra.